Welcome to Far Out with Faust. I'm Faust Chicho, in case you didn't know. And today I'm sitting here with Lynn Fisher. Lynn, congratulations, brother. Welcome back. You are officially the only the second guest to ever make a second appearance on the show. So that's awesome, because bro. everybody else is uh, is just like passed on. Ex- and, exactly, man. And, and well, you know, we ran out of the people. T-shirt in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my other guest is Justin Walden, and I'm going to let them tell you a little, a little bit about themselves. Justin, you want to go first? Uh, sure. Uh, you can do it. I'm Justin Walden, and I, I've been making. I'm a musician, a painter, and a like a video editor and stuff. Just kind of a whatever you can do on the the, the computer box. I make it, and uh, I've known. I've met Lynn through Hunter just what last week on text and then watch some of his work and you know all you guys I've seen yours now and and stuff but you know I'm just here it's like I'm interested in what's the you know what's going on and how the possibility of of to help artists and and uh, musicians and stuff how they can benefit from this you know the crypto and all this this kind of stuff that's happening right now so I'm here to learn very cool. <laughs> Hopefully, you'll learn something. No, um, so that's we're getting to the bottom of this. Lynn, go tell everyone about yourself. Sure. Um, well, I'm a two time champ here on Far Out with Foss, and uh, super happy to be here. I'm uh, I'm primarily a humanist and artist. Um, my uh, background spans everything from uh, being a technologist, chief marketing, chief strategy officer. Uh, to literally uh, blockchain crypto the last five years. I'm dipping my toe into uh, NFTs as an artist and also as uh, just a curious bystander um, and now participant of, of this um, incredible like movement to non-fungible tokens and what that really means to a lot of different, um, a lot of different businesses and uh, a lot of different uh, people in the world where this token um, is pretty powerful and uh, it's just taken on a life of its own. I, I just recently got back from, uh, from Bitcoin, uh, the Bitcoin conference in Miami and uh, spent a lot of time with, uh, with some of the whales there, Brock Pierce, um, a bunch of my friends who are, are just really pushing the industry envelope. And um, yeah, it's just been, uh, it's been really, really, uh, a whole different lifetime since I last talked with you, Faust. I mean, it's just crazy what's going on. Dude, it's like I'm talking to a different person. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. It's like uh, literally like there's a whole nother set of things that you have that you've been doing. And, you know, I'm so glad that you started to define NFTs because I'm sure that's the first question on, you know, I'm, people have a, a decent idea of what crypto is, some more than others. Um, you know, I'm, I've been a, a long time fan of crypto and have been in, in, invested in some way, shape or form on different levels for mm-hmm. probably about four years. My twin brother's a huge crypto guy. He, uh, he's, he's definitely a, a crypto millionaire. You know, he's, he started out with thousands and he's got quite the portfolio now. So he's, he loves it. He's kind like of, a, that, man. yeah, like that. he's a go-to guy and you know, he's, he's uh God, he's gonna he's gonna enjoy this podcast. It's be the first one you probably listen to the whole thing through, but uh, <laughs> you could tell how how different we've become. But so so a- NFTs. Can you guys t- talk a little more about those and like you know what 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 are they what are they doing to the crypto industry right now? Well, I mean, I'll, I'll give you a, a quick swing. I mean, I, I think there's so much happening with um, with NFTs and and these types of uh, tokens and and the utility of these tokens. Um, it's just moving at light speed. And, um, you know, it's because people are so quick and agile to pivot, create and distribute their ideas, um, you know, into the marketplace that uh, you just have to really be on it to see where things are floating and how they're moving. And, um, you know, and I've, I've spent, uh, you know, honestly, I was an artist on the sideline going, hey, I've got great digital assets. I'm, this is this is me, man. Like, um, you mean I can take my entire portfolio and put it out in a meaningful, tangible way that, um, you know, can actually not only get attention, but actually could, you know, possibly uh, convert into some fiat, which is, you know, a, you know, every artist's dream. And um, and so 
I think the main thing for people to realize is that a non-fungible token is just that it's, it's, it's a way to create a digital place marker uh, inside of the blockchain that says, hey, here I am, uh, this is mine and this is me and um, it's available for you to uh, purchase, uh, bid on, and once you own it, you can sell it again or you can uh, have, there's certain digital rights to these, um, to these tokens and what they represent. Uh, but to see, you know, the, the intensity by which uh, some of these artists, uh, you know, who are both well-known and completely unknown, everything from, you know, um, you know, a $60 million plus uh, sale at Christie's to, uh, you know, uh, $800,000 sale at Wall Street Journal. Um, I was listening to a podcast and this, uh, this um, you know, this journalist who's a fairly well-known journalist, but, you know, nothing super, you know, not like at the, at the Pulitzer Prize winning top of his game end, but really talented. But the thing is, he smashed it because he had the narrative. And I think it's really, you know, great art has a narrative and there's always a backstory to great art. And it's whether, you know, where the art's been, how it was inspired, yeah. you know, is the artist dead? Is the artist in jail? Um, you know, there's, uh, the, the better the story and the narrative, the, so the true, man. art takes on its yeah. own life. And now even more so in the NFT space where we are, you know, we're seeing a lot of packaging happening um, and uh, narratives. I'll give you an example. Like uh, I just saw Android Jones, one of my favorite artists of all time. Uh, he uh, he's really, really clever and he's always been clever. And he's not only just a brilliant artist, but he's he's a brilliant marketer and marketeer. And what he did was he, he actually created a package of uh, artists that he, you know, consolidated into this one NFT pool. And he made it look like uh, you were going to a weed dispensary and buying these different types of strains of weed. And it was just clever. And um, what were you so, buying? Different well, artists or different? Yeah, no, you're buying the art of the artists. Okay, yeah. okay. Exactly. So, uh, you know, just to kind of close it off. Yeah, so there's a, there's a vast amount of, I could ramble on about what I don't know. And um, there's a bit uh, about what I do know and, and what I've come to learn this last, uh, this last trip to... Um, Miami for the uh, Bitcoin conference uh, was that one, they had an entire art gallery there in the conference, which was beyond cool. Like it was probably 20% of the entire footprint of this, um, of the, of the conference. And uh, even cooler were the, the artists that were featured were all artists that had some kind of bend on, on cryptocurrency. And it made it, it gave it some tangible you know, relevance, but but uh, but when you dig deeper and you actually got a chance to talk to the artist, you know, it became a much more lively, uh, just be like going to an art gallery. But, you know, what a lot of people aren't doing is they're not able to see the artist. They're looking at these NFTs on in certain gateways and, and certain, um, you know, uh, repository places where people can dig in. And, um, you know, the, the fascinating thing about it was that uh, everybody was fascinated about it and everybody was really into, you know, how is this coin going to, you know, transform not only the art industry, but other works of art and, and things of that nature. And, and as I was mentioning before, the Wall Street Journal guy uh, put out his NFT, which was basically an NFT of his article yeah. that he wrote on NFTs. And the reason why he smashed it is because he was the first Wall Street Journal article to be NFT'd. And so the, the, all of a sudden the narrative of rarity and scarcity and, and uniqueness became real. And, and somebody, some people out there bid it all the way up to like, I think it was like $780,000. Wow. And so to me, you know, there's this, I don't know if there's that much surplus of cash out there, but God bless everybody that has it. To right. Stuff I mean, like that. It's funny. You, you you think times are tough, and I remember like there was like two three months into the into the pandemic, and and I walked down the street, and it, the lot the mega was up to like four hundred million, and and the other one was like I'm like, um, people aren't hurting that bad because the lottery is sky high right now. You know, everyone's still buying lottery tickets, so apparently we have some money to spare. But anyway. Yeah. Or you know, misguided, uh, misguided, you know, right? <laughs> misguided investment opportunities. But exactly. Let's try it. Right. But Justin, you probably heard all that and you probably have a lot of, uh, I mean, I don't want to put you on the spot. <laughs> no. You're like, well, man, 
Go ahead. No, that's exactly kind of what how I was understanding it is what the way you're talking about it. And what got me into it was my dad calling me. Who he was in a band that was like an '80s kind of R&B, had a hit song and stuff. And so they had found a wreck, like a bunch of demos of unreleased stuff. And then an NFT company approached them to like release it as an NFT. And then they called me because I have a hard drive vault of, of all the years and all the records I've done, like throughout the years of making records in LA, I've accumulated a lot of, you know, digital unreleased files, songs, kind of masters and stuff like that. And one particular thing that I have is, I was involved in a band a few years ago with a, uh, not many, I hardly ever say this at all, well, with the guy from Slayer, Jeff Hanneman, who passed away, you know, about seven or eight years ago now. But we were making music and he was sending me like iPhone memos and riffs and piano ideas and song ideas. And I have like a whole couple albums worth of stuff that we had like started and, and my dad was like, you guys, you gotta do this. You gotta make the riffs, you know, take those, make an NFT, like do that. And then I'm like, wait, let me learn something first. And then Tom McDonald bought Eminem's beat for a hundred grand, the NFT. So did you hear about this rapper, this independent rapper in LA bid on an NFT of Eminem's and it was a hundred grand. So he bought the beat next, the next week he released a song over the beat said produced by Eminem. And I went, okay, all right. Now I see what it can do. Jeff Hanneman stuff's not going there. I've already got that. Like, you're not gonna, I'm not gonna like create something that they, that somebody else can go make. That's right. a whole, you know, like, I'm like, gosh, I've got bank full of, you know, endless Slayer riffs. Right. From the, yeah, but from let the me, uh, let me, let me address that real quick. So, so here's the thing. Um, you may not have the right strategy because you've had those recordings forever anyway. Now, if you're going to actually use them and put them into music, go for it. But yeah. if you are looking to um, do what I think a lot of other people are doing right now in what is called the category of unfinished works, it becomes like the Picasso sketches that just never went anywhere. And it just was in a, in a, you know, in a folder or a file somewhere where, the um, where these sketches uh, like Dali has a tremendous amount of, uh, of these sketches that are worth quite a lot. And um, and so, you know, my thing is, is, you know, if you are going to, uh, you know, if you were to put those things out, it would be radically cool for for a collector. Now, you can also set some of the NFT uh, rights, um, you know, in the smart contract. And, you know, there is a smart contract that comes along with these things. And um, the smart contract can actually prohibit some of the use of these types of NFTs you can give. And that becomes the value of the bid. So if, if like you can do anything you want with this, but make commercial music that is actually sold, then it's going to be worth less. But, you know, it, that probably that Eminem uh, beat would probably be worth a third or, or maybe a tenth. Yeah. But um, but you can set that up so that you can you can actually uh, allow people to collect it but not use it in a, in a, an actual work uh, that is commercially you know, sold. So um, yeah, that might be a different, a oh, different that's approach. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's but I'm fucking confused because what this dude paid a hundred grand for an Eminem beat. And then you said a few weeks later it was released. Next, the following week he released a song um, and he's been, this guy's been doing, he's the only guy that's done this yet. Every like for the past six months, eight months, him and his girlfriend have been making a video and releasing a song. It's getting a million views in an hour. Now they're up to like 5 million views in a couple of days for wow. each one they put out and they're killing the industry. They're starting to, they're starting to get written up in billboard and they're getting plaques and it's just these two people. And, um, and so he's been playing this kind of long game and he had this, you know, Eminem was like his idol and he wrote a song, like a letter to Slim Shady. Oh, okay. And like he he did story wrote a letter as like new stand or something, you know, and it's like yeah. and it just blew up and then the then the one they did this week is like doubled even that. So like they went from like three million to like six million. And it was so, like it was okay. just a perfect like pr he bought it as a plug. It was just like, you know, it was like marketing, but it was this whole thing. Nobody knew whether he was gonna be able to put it out and actually say 
produced by Eminem was like yeah. The big so thing. yeah, I mean, it's uh, that's that, that's the thing is that um, is that here's here's the bigger question at the other end of the stick: Who is going to enforce? the NFT once there's a breach of copyright, once there's a breach of rights, right? So the challenge becomes um, uh, one of enforcement. Right now, it's a mad dash to pick up things that are interesting, that have value, that, you know, may add to your game otherwise, um, you know, in a, in a use case. But really, like, you know, the, the fact is, is that NFTs, uh, the enforcement of NFTs is a big question mark um, within the industry, within all these industries that this is happening. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I, I see, I see the, uh, the nature of, of well-known artists with unfinished works or pieces, like you could sell the stems from, you know, your uh, pro tools, uh, yeah. you know, session. And that is a much more valuable thing. Like maybe he just got an AB track of the beat or did he get like the stems? Like if he got the stems, it's worth even more. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So you can really hunker down and play with it. But, but yeah, I mean, I think the, 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 the cool thing is, is for artists that, you know, it's, uh, it's about, it's about being discovered fully and, um, what I've heard and what I've come to understand from some, you know, significant players is that they, they are interested. NFT buyers are really interested in the backstory. They're really interested in the uh, additional works, the ones that aren't quite so well-known or um, you know, when some, it's like an artist that you've discovered and you're like, this guy is genius. This woman is amazing. Like um, what else have they done? And then all of a sudden they get some, it's the first question everyone asks, whether they're talking, you know, yeah. no matter what you're looking into, it's yeah. like, Oh, what else has he directed? What else is, what else has he been in? It's, you know, everyone wants the pedigree, wants the history. Yeah. And with works of art, it's even more interesting because, uh, you know, you could be, uh, you know, like I said, you could be Picasso and then, you know, blow up after you're dead. But then everybody's like, well, what about the unfinished works and the little sketches? And all of a sudden oh, that yeah. becomes that that becomes the fever pitch thing to get. You know, it's like one thing yeah. to have the Mona Lisa, but, you know, it's another thing to have right. sketches of himself naked, you know, in the bathroom. Right. So, you know, that's the kind of cool thing that this is starting to unearth and, and, and draw people into. Well, and I, a way I envisioned it also is like, you know, I've been making music, been making music for other people, like my entire career, but I've always been making Scarecrow Adams. And it's always been something that, that I do no matter what, like nobody pays me for it. You know, it's my, it's my thing. And finally, after like 25 years of just making records, I'm like, wait, why can't I just kind of have an art show? like a virtual room where you, people, people can walk in and like walk over to a painting and then that painting starts to move and then the songs in that painting. And then you can go to that and then you can, re, you know, like click on the thing and read a little story or see a little thing and then walk over to this one and do the same thing. And I'm like, the NFT seemed like a way that it could be packaged to where more of my songs are like a painting than they are something to be a hit song on the radio. That's well, like what the, the Harry Potter of, of, uh, of music enjoying, you know, experiencing. Yeah. I mean, so, so what you're describing is what I saw a lot of, and, and a lot of, um, a lot of my artists, um, when I say my artists, um, I'm going to do a shameless quick plug here. So we've got a, an incredible, uh, art show called ancient future and it's the, you know, the juxtaposition of, you know, not only just like the old way of doing things, but the organic way. And then, you know, some of the more technologically advanced and how um, technology has drastically impacted just the nature of art, right? So I'm a digital artist um, and anything I do is, is a composite of all my uh, digital craft from video to, you know, to, you know, everything. And so what people are doing now is using augmented reality. Um, and there's a, an app called Art Vive, Art V-I-V-E. And that actually lets you do some incredible things that when somebody rolls up to your picture uh, or your painting, and it can be anywhere in the world, it, it, it basically uh, scans it, recognizes it, and then pulls up the um, augmented reality that you created for that piece. And oh, so cool. what, what you end up having is a, a, a dynamic, um, you know, array of, of mediums to play with, which is audio, you know, and then uh, motion within your still frame. Um, you can do video. Uh, you could do a lot of different things that uh, brings the piece alive and actually makes it a more complete work. 
um, probably as, as the most artists intended, but you know, it's like, yeah, you know, uh, there were three songs that inspired me to write, to paint this thing. Mm -hmm. And then there was a picture of my ex-girlfriend who, you know, <laughs> passed away. And, you know, my mom gave me this banjo when I was two and here's all of it right here for you to just consume in this narrative. That's complete and holistic yeah. without talking to the artist. So this is what I find fascinating about, you know, NFTs and just where art in general is going. Um, it's, it's beautiful. Really? It, it's a, uh, art needs a comeback. It needs, it needs a, a rally. I mean, look, I, I only say that because I'm sitting here in New York city and the theater has been closed for a year and a, over a year and a half and they're finally going to reopen, but you don't, you know, it's, it's like the life's blood of this city and you don't realize it until you, you go down to Times Square and there's nobody in line for a ticket. There's, you know, it's like people come here and they get overjoyed by the shows they see. We, it brings so much energy to the city and the performers and the actors. And anyway, you know, I love, I, I come from the arts, you know, I don't know if Justin, no, I know Lynn, you probably are aware, but I, you know, I'm, I'm a filmmaker. I'm an, I'm an actor, but I come from the stage. Um, and uh, so it's just phenomenal to me what you're saying. Cause it's like, it almost reminds me of what, who was it? Who was it that did it? And this is like a really watered down commercial comparison, but the way that I think, I think it was Amazon tried to bring all of the, the interesting uh, histories to a movie with, to the actual movie. So that when you're watching it, you know, you have these, you know, you, you can either turn them on or off, but you have these pop-ups that say, you know, what's his name during, you know, broke yeah, his arm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah X-ray. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you can exactly. see the metadata, the metadata behind what's going on in the scene, who's in the like scene. The song, all the things. All the yeah. And that's kind of cool. You know what I mean? It's a, it's definitely, I, I mean, I never really got into it, but, it, but when I, when I experienced it, it was always interesting, interesting stuff. Um, I'd rather watch the movie without the interruption, but that being said, art is a different it's different for everyone you know it's a different experience so i would definitely be interested in that and you know look i don't know how you separate music from art to for me there's two are like there's always a, a musical composition to art even if you can't hear it that's the way i understand it and see it you know yeah i mean but that's that's what's so cool now is that imagine uh you know rembrandt or you know or dali uh being able to say yeah, I was listening to this symphony when I painted this and here's what inspired me. And all of a sudden the connectivity to the colors and the strokes and every, and the emotion in the, uh, in the, in, in, you know, and all the elements of the piece become much more vibrant and alive. I mean, um, you know, we've had to suffer, I say suffer, but we've had to suffer without that kind of connectivity. And, and that's what made, I think that's what made artists rock stars in the day. You know, they were, um, they were eccentric, complex individuals who who um, allowed people to see inside their soul through their art, and um, and that's what we're all fascinated by: people that lay their whole life out on on display in some form or fashion in a, in a artistic way. That's why we dig, you know, we dig yeah. the train wrecks and we dig the fucking heroes and we dig all those people that are willing to just spill it out, spill their guts. Look at our, our. I'm just thinking of like all the playwrights who. I'm who I was, you know, I, I'm in love with, you know, like Eugene O'Neill, Tennessee Williams, even the actors, you know, these guys, you, you just, they lay their whole mess out and it's a beautiful mess, you know, and it, it, there's a lot of vulnerability that goes along with that, but man, if that's what makes it beautiful, that's what makes it everything, you know, like For fucking sure. Eugene O'Neill, long day's journey in the night. He's like, do not publish till 10 years after I die. Because uh, this is some heavy shit. <laughs> no one had yeah. seen some shit like that before, but that right. was his life story, man. It's uh, it's awesome. It's 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 so crazy. So, but what I'm confused about, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm still a little confused about NFTs and how they translate into this, and and how they begin, like how they go from this thing to crypto. And I'm I'm I may not get that. This. <laughs> this yeah. podcast but um you know i don't even know if you guys want to attempt to help me understand that a little more but i'm still a little confused about that and i don't what i'm also confused about is you know how how we go from this world of cryptocurrency to to like and, and we've gone from there to the world of you know music 
art and, and, and big tech pretty much, mm. you know, help me out, help me understand that, what that bridge. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, um, I think there's a, well, you got a lot of questions wrapped up in there, but yeah. I think kind of break to break it down. Like, um, you know, first of all, um, you know, crypto in its essence is a new basis for agreeing to value. Right. And so uh, you can take this pen and be like, this is what we're going to use to transact our deal. You value this pen enough. I can give it to you and you can give me what I value enough. That's worth that pen. Right. So um, and and crypto is is uh, about uh, disintermediating the banking system where we don't need banks anymore to 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 tell us that we have a conduit of value between each other. And and so cryptocurrency becomes this, um, you know, this digital uh, vehicle to uh, allow people of similar value and interest to, you know, transact either you know, products or services or, you know, transact something for an arbitrage, right. To, to, you know, right. transact. I love that about money. it. Yeah. Anything that decentralizes yeah. this shit show we have going on. It's great by me. <laughs> yeah. But there becomes the shit show, you know, your greatest strength is your greatest weakness. And it's taken us quite many years to get to a point where not only do have we have you know a sizable amount of liquidity in the market um, but we also have a number of players who are willing to um, move uh, different coins around in in an exchange of value that people are that people regard as stable and then ultimately um, you know exchanges where people are, are moving you know fiat into either you know buying it or um, or receiving it once they sell it right and um, and so you know to the to the end degree to the nth degree and the end result of um, you know fiat being ubiquitous and it's the one thing that's you know keeps us all this whole thing moving it adds value and stability but but the reality is is that um, the more that this flourishes and the more tokens and um, and coins are are used in, in different ways, not just to create uh, wealth, but their, you know, utility coin or a token is designed to create utility and right. it's designed to move the model that it's, that it's been oh, you know, okay, planted okay. in to help add to the actual business that's, you know, in the third dimension. Right. So that, I see. You know, so as an example, it's like you're a hotel and you want to create a loyalty program and you've got hotels all over the world and partners, or I'll give you an example, like the airline, airline miles, right? So airline miles are completely uh, ideal for tokenization um, and the tokenomics behind it are already there. We just call them miles, right? right? So if miles became a coin and then the, that my, those miles became uh, oh, I see. They you could actually spend into, them fucking things. Yeah. And they were contained in their own ecosystem that right. had fungibility, both in terms of buying a ticket and also fungibility in getting, you know, out of them and somebody mm -hmm. buying them for fiat, then you have a market, right? And that's what, that's what okay. this whole thing is, is that you establish markets and some, some coins, uh, you know, they call them shit coins. They're not the, the top <laughs> end. They're, they're yeah. all the other coins, but the alt, um, the alt coins. Yeah. The alt coin. Yeah. There's actually uh, as an, as an alternate, all to the the, uh, yeah, as an alternate <laughs> to the, to the Miami conference, um, they had a shit coin conference that was actually right at the same time as the Bitcoin conference, uh, to prove a point and to make a, make a, you know, like make Sundance a film festival. And then. Slam dance. No, no. Yeah. Or the, slam yeah, or the one and any of the others that popped up. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, so I guess the, the nature, I just wanted to kind of share that part of it. And I think, you know, the, I think the nature of crypto is uh, absolutely critical to our human evolution. Um, it, and it's not so much to destabilize uh, the existing, you know, invisible prison, although that is a great number yeah. one freaking benefit. But the reality is, is that we're starting to be more lucid in how we, um, in how we do business and, uh, and, and really business is all this. It's, it's just about an energy exchange. How yep. much energy are you giving me yeah. for how yeah. much energy I'm giving you and what we call in between is, you know, immaterial, as long as there's a stable, a stable, uh, environment to, to track it and that's what the blockchain is um it is an irrevocable um dude i just got i just got goosebumps because you know I, i'm i'm that's the future you know what i'm saying that's that's where we got to go that's where we got to end up because the system we're on right now obviously is fucking twisted and and it and, and it doesn't work you know it just it, it creates tremendous amount of strife and you know i mean because of greed because of the way it's set up but 
you know, you, you take all that away and you, you make it a true exchange. And then all of a sudden people are doing what they love because they love it. And, and that's, you know, that's what I think uh, where we, we, where we got to go. That's where I think, you know, some of our brothers and sisters, you know, uh, who live on el- elsewhere and in other worlds, you know, where they've, you know, they're probably looking at us like, what the fuck is when are they going to figure it out? Totally. totally. So I'll give you, I'll give you a good segue. A good segue for you, Faust, is this. Imagine that uh, cryptocurrency was evolved um, back in the day and, uh, and all of the government's money was uh, blockchain. We would not have a $400 hammer, an $800 toilet seat, and we would not have black ops, um, you know, uh, these different black ops programs that yeah. uh, take that kind of cash on the balance sheet because we would all know exactly where it goes and why. And, and so in this new era, and age that we're entering, you know, all of us who are conscious want transparency. We yeah. want um, to know that, you know, we want to know where it all goes and how it yeah. all goes because it's, you know, we're, we're all one and there's been too many people taking advantage of the fact that for a long time and, now, and yeah. systems are not, you know, transparent. And that's what I'm super, you know, excited about is that we're, yeah, we're venturing into this place where we've got, you know, potential to, uh, to see things clearly and to ensure that, um, monies are being, f- you know, funded properly, et cetera. And, and that we're not, you know, seeing people die in the street from hunger because I mean, they, millions know, of people every year, shit. man. Yeah. You know, exactly. we're, we're giving out 500 uh, million, you know what? I won't say it so we don't get flagged, but, and that's great. You know, I mean, that's great, but why don't, why, why don't we give it, we throw away more food in a day in this country, you know, and there are millions of people starving to death, literally. And, and when when we just pretend like it's not there, it it boggles my mind. We don't even have a system in place that allows us to bring the food to the people who need it yet. We have all the technology in the world and, and this world and others, you know, like literally. They're making it harder and harder for people to to do that anywhere to to help feed the hungry. Exactly. And, 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 no, go ahead. Go ahead, Justin. Well, no, it's not. That's just, it's, it's ridiculous. Anything that decentralizes power, you know, and, to, and takes away their ability to continue to make the whole dependent, you know, I think is exactly what we need because they're just, they're, you know, it's like this, it's like predator and prey. I don't want, I mean, it's, it's like every move they make is there's another move that's countered but it's it's like literally a race and i don't you know it's it does, and it sounds like a conspiracy theory but they're doing it they're not hiding their you know the agenda they have about putting everyone under the rule of a few and i mean everyone you know i mean i don't that's that's the way i see it anyway <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, it's a system and systems are run by, you know, systems are made to be scalable. And, and that's so that smaller resources affect a greater net result over a larger audience or a larger scale. So uh, by default, our human nature is to uh, build it, build it like that. And then also to work it so that your family uh, takes advantage of, you know, the things that you've done and, you know, and yeah, on one level, okay. But like, you know, on another level, when you're deceiving people, and it's one thing to be like, hey, I built this toll bridge, and right, it actually connects you and saves you three hours of driving, pay me, you know, uh, but sure. when you're like, uh, well, I didn't tell you that there's actually like this little road down the street <laughs> that you just cross over and doesn't cost you three times as much. And by the way, I demolished that road because I want you to drive on my And highway. I stole the plans for this bridge from someone else. And then I killed everybody that knew about <laughs> it. They, yeah. they wouldn't so, sell their house. Exactly. Exactly. So this, this is when it gets, this is when it gets funky. God, I mean, this is basically a book report for the United States government in five seconds, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, conscious profit is what I'm all about. Um, yeah. I've been, I've been shifting yeah. my, my game to conscious capital, conscious profit. Um, you know, really focusing on people and businesses and, and rewarding businesses that I know are, have our conscious capital, yeah. conscious foot profit focused, you know, because profit's not a dirty word. We make it no. a dirty word when we, you know, acquire profits in a way that, you know, at the expense of others. And, and, you know, in the, in the first place, you know, the business that you, that you're in, I mean, if you're, I think, you know, for, for me, I guess is it has to have a, a servitude to humanity and others. Yeah. 
that makes it, uh, you know, worthwhile for me. And, you know, I used to push paper around as a chief strategy officer, you know, global yeah. consulting practice for 20 plus years. And I sat back and was like, is anything I'm doing making a fuck bit of difference? Right <laughs> yeah. now? And the answer is no. Am I even uh, happy? It isn't. You know? Yeah, no, I mean, I was happy enough. I was making my money. I had my time and, you know, I, I did my thing, whatever. But the reality is, is my, my impact, my impact footprint um, was really, really minuscule to none. And I was only really serving myself ultimately um, yeah. what I could gain, what I could have the vacations I could take um, the bottles I could buy, you know, whatever yeah. that stupidity. And, um, and then I got conscious about, you know, my game and um, man, just life is so much more fruitful and Oh. everything means a little bit more. And, um, you know, I just like finding people like that, you know, I bet, man, I bet. I mean, I know, I know I've experienced it too. Um, but Justin, what's up? Tell me what's going down, man, <laughs> <laughs> man. So many, like a thousand different, uh, clouds of thoughts of everything that you were saying. Um, and, and so how, right how, long then, how long have you been doing? So, so like, I, I, so I was doing what you were talking about for a while, um, late nineties, I started doing the first big record I did was corns follow the leader. And so like, I did all the hip hop tracks on that record. I was like the programmer and I played drums on those and, and they were the three weirdest songs that the corns ever made, you know, <laughs> and then that, and then on that record, and I had never heard of corn before the day I went to work for him. Right. Like the, I got the gig cause my friend was producing it and he played them scarecrow Adams and they're like, this guy's shit's weird enough. Let's have him come, you know? <laughs> And uh, so I, I was doing stuff on that record where I put I put the blue whales on it or the humpback whales. I was infusing stuff on this really dark music consciously, like sneaking in yoga chants here on Godsmack and doing this, on, you know, playing hand drums. I played hand drums on a Kiss record, you know, like stuff like that. But it was the world was so like you'd go to the shows, man. And it was just the, it was not my energy. I loved all the bands. I loved all making the music, but it was just like, it was just dark. It was just dark. And I was tired of trying to be the one little light in the room <laughs> around all of that. And, and I just, I couldn't, like I was making a crap load of money, like, and it just wasn't, it wasn't doing it for me. I'm like, I don't, I don't like doing this. And at, at the kind of at the, the end of the, the top of it was like, I went to work for Guns N' Roses. They tried to hire me. I said, no. Like after a day in the studio, I'm like, uh-uh, I'm not going to spend the next 18 months hit and stop and start and stop, you know? And then, and then I got, and then Trent Reznor tried to hire me and I was so full of myself and such an out, like a young, dumb kid. I'm like, no, that's not enough money. That's not enough money. And they kept trying to call me the guy who, you know, the guy who got the, the gig is, we all know who he is now. It's like, Wait, who is he? Atticus <laughs> Ross. Oh, it's, like okay. his, it's like Trent Rez. It's the, he's Nine Inch Nails and his composing dude and stuff. And and uh, like I like learned how to kind of balance that stuff later on. But I just was really trying to to go, you know, just because I can get this money and do this record, it's like this isn't my energy. This isn't what I do. And I kept getting hired for that kind of stuff. And then. I basically, I left LA and moved to a little town in the mountains called Crestone and lived in a cabin, like at the end of a road and didn't know anybody for four years. Like I, I like just left and, and quit it all and then kind of rediscovered everything again, you know, cause being in LA and being in the music industry, but coming from an artist, being an artist, not someone who is trying to get famous or someone who is trying to get a record deal. The town kind of put that stuff on you. And the work kind of put that on you and it changed the game. It was like all of a sudden, you're, you're, if you did a show at the Whiskey, it didn't matter how good the show was. If you didn't have a meeting with a label the next day, it was a failure, mm. you know? And then, and it's like, and now, you know, 25 years later, I've moved back to Illinois in my hometown and I'm like hanging out with people who make music because they love it. You know, it's their careers. Some of them, some of it's not, but it's like, ah, like the just being around people that make it because that's what I do. I'm, I make I make it to breathe. I can't survive. It's the way I deal with the world. It's the way I deal with myself. And 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 I've never really kind of fit in in that world, but I've been around it the whole time, like making records for 
for all sorts of people, you know, that like were my heroes when I was a kid and stuff. But it was like the um, when it wasn't it wasn't wasn't conscious yet. It wasn't cool to be conscious yet. So I had to just leave. Yeah, awesome. man. It's a uh, you know, it's funny. We talk about be- becoming more conscious, but it, and, it, and it goes right with what I was just saying. It's a key, but you, you you become more conscious so that you can then kind of allow for everything that's coming into the subconscious, right? It's like, um, but you got to become more conscious first. You know, you can't kind of get into that flow until you know how. And it, you know, you kind of gonna have to get out of like the the mental part well, and stay more in the middle you know the 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 saving grace for me is that i have record that like my main talent is recording right so the voice is in my head now i can i put out and then i get to hear them and so they're not in my head anymore mm-hmm. right like it's it's really working through it like there is an actual like subconscious conversation trying to peak up because there's you know it's whatever bullshit i've got going on in my head about the world first it's coming out and and it's uh it's just to me that's what it's about now and it's it's really it's taken me full circle to come back you know like i'm 50 now and so like you know at at 20 when i became scarecrow adams and kind of put on my mask to the world so that i could be crazy was why my, you know, why I didn't go, I, why I didn't go by my name, you know, and uh, and now I'm like, holy crap, man, I feel like I'm 20, but I've got, I've got even better tools, and I'm better, and I'm fucking cooler, you know, like, gosh, you know, like every 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 week, it's like, I was really stupid last week. I just got yeah. this this week, and then the next week, it's like, what's what am I gonna get? What am I gonna learn next week? You know, that I, what am I gonna realize? I didn't know shit about, <laughs> you know. And now I'm willing to learn. It's just nice to be kind of have that acceleration of of uh, growth rather than it's just maturity, like, my man. It's maturity. Yeah, yeah. That's what it is. Like I find yeah. the same thing. You know, um, yeah, we talked about this before, Fost. You know, Maharishi said, uh, "Do less, accomplish more." <laughs> do nothing, accomplish everything. It's actually one of Hunter's favorite, uh, uh, mantras. Yeah. And I actually, after I told him what it meant to me, he's like, that's not what it means, but that's exactly what it means. <laughs> uh, at least that's it wasn't what it means to me. motherfucker. That's what it means. Yeah. But no, but, it, but the way, you know, Maharishi intended it, uh, was different, but like, you know, do less, accomplish more is about uh, your wisdom. And, and, you know, you've been around the block once, and you know how much energy to put into something to get the net effect. And you know where your energy will be wasted, where your energy is most effective. And so you do less and accomplish more. And then doing uh, nothing and accomplish everything um, in my blueprint means that um, know when the universe needs to unfold and allow the play and the movie to unearth itself before you so that you're not putting direct energy. Be the silent observer in a given moment and um, allow the universe to organize and, and conspire on your behalf. And then at the right moment, when, when it's time to take action in that, in that moment, then you can accomplish everything by doing as little as possible, least amount of energy, yeah. most amount of outpa- output yeah. and impact. And then, you know, that's maturity. And, and yeah, I feel that too. I, I, feel, I feel that has been, you know, a great theme for me in the last four or five years, especially in my art. Yeah, I can produce pretty quickly, and um, it's because I'm I'm not trying. I'm letting spirit guide me. Yeah. I'm I'm doing it. It's me. It's my lens. But you know, the bigger pieces I don't have to worry about, and it just kind of falls lens, into lens. place. You know, yeah. we, I think a lot of people get caught up. We, you know, we're a goal oriented society, and, and having goals is great. But when you get attached to outcomes especially very specific outcomes you know you 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 don't realize if you don't realize what a powerful creator you are how you're limiting yourself to you know kind of crushing all these probabilities and crushing all these different things that are trying to get into your life because you're so focused on you know a singular goal or i got to make this mark or you know make the x amount of money or accomplish this much like you know when you start experiencing how much greater capacity you have to pr- to produce to to d- to do what you love um, to accomplish your goals by taking you know your foot off the gas and just you know letting letting the vehicle use the momentum it has 
you just, you start to have all these, then, then things just start showing up, you know, and you're like, huh, I was just, dude, are you like, how, how did you know that I, you know, all these things start happening for you. And I think that's what you're talking about Lynn. And, and also you, Justin, what you're coming into, you know, and experiencing more of in your everyday life and work. It's like, but I think a lot of people are still kind of stuck effort, you know, efforting in, in yes. kind of a three dimensional way when and they don't realize that it's uh it's a lot of wheel spinning that they don't have to do. So I just thought it was worth mentioning. Agreed. Totally. Yeah, man. Yeah. So what the hell else you guys want to talk about? <laughs> no, no. So let's go back to crypto, man. Cause crypto, you know, crypto is a hot, hot issue right now with everything that's happening. Um, and then we're going to talk about UFOs too, because that's another hot issue with everything that's happening. Oh yeah. But, but let's start with cryptos because, you know, recently I've had some people who, who, uh, you know, I'm, I've known for a few years and who kind of, uh, we realized how aligned we are, we were when, when things started to go down last year with, with everything, um, and governments acting the way they were and people acting the way they were and the reaction to it, you know, the kind of the polarization that happened. But I, but, you know, I recently had a few people be like, dude, you got to be careful with that crypto stuff, man. That's actually like, that's actually the, the, the globalists, the, the, the elites, they, they own all that too. And they could take it away from you anytime they want. And I was like, um no no that's not right <laughs> i was like i don't think that's well... uh, I, I mean <laughs> you know and the other thing i saw which i was like what the fuck like did you see that the other day the united states government supposedly recovered the crypto on a ransom on on the that pipe well who knows i mean it's, the, the media is putting it out you know it's probably spoon fed by the government but you know uh, who knows the truth they recovered what well, were there, they they, there was a ransom paid in crypto to get the pipeline going, which everyone, you know, says was probably bullshit anyway. But this 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 place paid these these hackers, these ransomware people in crypto, and then I saw a headline a few days ago that said that the government um, tracked or and recovered that crypto for this company, and I was like, how the fuck did they do that? And like. Crypto is like one of the hardest things. And they were, and like, the, the, of course the interviews were fucking absurd. Like, I mean, you have to just, just assume nobody knows a fucking thing about crypto and put it out there, which is mostly true. But you know, the, the, inter, the interviewer said like, well, what happened was the company was very conscientious when they started to pay the ransom people. So because they took the, the appropriate steps beforehand the fbi was able to trace that i was like what the fuck no that's not how i don't i didn't understand how they were trying to put this article out and, and assume the people who know what crypto is couldn't read just right through the bullshit but I, I don't know like how do you recover crypto once it's not yours <laughs> i don't know well, i didn't get it yeah i mean uh uh, definitely not an expert on that, but I mean, you know, there's, you know, there are ways beyond the blockchain, whether or not it's more spycraft, espionage level stuff, um, being able to, um, you know, even spy in on their computer that maybe just tied to the regular internet it has nothing to do with the crypto, but maybe they got their passwords or, yeah. you know, maybe there was a way that they, you know, um, were able to game that part of the system for them. Or maybe they send it out with, you know, some type of uh, pixel tracer or something like that. But yeah. I think that's all conjecture. I think the the thing that um, is interesting uh, along the same lines is uh, I, I just recently had a friend of mine who uh, I would say is uh, very astute, will lean into the conspiracy th side of things a little bit, but is more practical than, than just like, let's just be, you know, fanatically conspiratorial and figure out you know, how we can just be polarized with all the, the weirdness, right? So, um, you know, but what he did show me is he showed me, um, if you guys are familiar with The Economist, the uh, magazine, which has uh, been a staunch conservative, um, you know, publication about uh, our financial, you know, uh, world at the top levels, right? And, um, and uh, 50 years ago, he showed me this, the cover of The Economist, and I'm sure we could find it. But, um, 
but we will, we will find it. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll insert it. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, and, and if you need it, let me know. I think I can get it from my buddy, but, but he showed me this, this cover and the inferences to all the various iconography and all of the little, like even the, um, the one and the zero, like, like being binary code um, is rampant in this image. And his assertion was that you think, you know, his base assertion was you think, you know, blockchain and all this shit is like um, not traceable. Think again. And, and so what we do know is this, is that you can crack today's blockchains. You can crack today's crypto. You just have to have a quantum computer to do it. Mm. So now if you lean into the fact that we might have, we've had technology that, you know, that's anti-gravitic, um, you know, for flying saucers. And now you're had, talking uh, my language, man. And I know Keep I was going. talking your language, brother. <laughs> yeah, man. I was trying to segue you earlier into the four hundred dollar hammer, but you didn't take the bait. But no, I missed it, man. <laughs> that's okay, man. That's okay. We're at we're at a natural inflection point. So, um, so yeah. So the the nature of of uh, this technology that we've not been privy to and that we've been you know relegated to in terms of our limitations, uh, it's quite possible that um, that the you know the new world the new world government being just people that have their fingers on the buttons of everything um, and are organized to a degree that they, uh, that they release this as kind of like a opening salvo to what we think might be freedom. Yeah. The reality is, is that it's more than likely not. And that um, while there is anonymity in the blockchain system and you can create um, a number of uh, veils to, you know, protect yeah. your identity and do the damn thing. But fact is, is that um, you don't need, all you need is a fucking wicked powerful computer yeah. and, um, and some incredible, you know, crypt- cryptographers who know how to backdoor that shit. Right. And it's possible, but you know, to me, here's the thing, anything that has to do with money and remember where, where Bitcoin came from, it came from the, the twins who, you know, started Facebook with uh, Zuckerberg these guys are classic guys who are yeah. part of the skull and bone classic skull and bone. Oh, guys. Yeah. I mean, their lineage yeah. can the be system. tracked back to, yeah, their lineage can be tracked back to, um, you know, some of the what yeah. people call the cabal families. I the really Illuminati. don't care. Yeah. Whatever. I mean, you there's know, a lot of uh, names for them. Facebook is Facebook is Palantir and it's a CIA front. Fine. Whatever. Okay. You know, I mean, like I, I'm, I'm not doing anything. They're definitely but, uh, doing exactly. They're exactly. definitely doing They've definitely had meetings. Okay, first of all, the United <laughs> States government f- has had has funded Facebook, has funded Google, so that I mean that you know when the NSA saw what Google was doing, they they literally like wet their pants, and I don't mean with pee, you know, like yeah. The, it, I mean, talk about a dream come true. It's uh, it was uh, the marriage and the fornication was always going to happen it was just a matter of time and the fact that it you know it, it started out as one thing and ended up as another look at google i mean talk about starting out as one thing and ending up another google used to be a search engine <laughs> i don't know what it is now but it's not exactly a search engine anymore it can function as that kind of but you know it's a lot more now google's probably one of the most if not the most powerful corporation on the entire planet and i remember when like they were just like a bunch of burners who made a lot of money and had a lot of great ideas and were really into art. And then those people left Google and I was like, oh, it's going to go to shit now. And sure enough, man. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it, look, they do a lot of great things too, but uh, I, I think they, they could do things a little better, you know, less corporate like. Yeah, I agree. That's just me. So you're going to say something, buddy. I, I, no, I, went, I, I don't know where that thought went. <laughs> that's I don't know cool. what I was going to say. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> oh, not at all, man. I just, uh, I, you know, I this these these subjects are always like fascinating to me. And um, you know, on one hand, it's like I don't want somebody tracking me. Of course, I want privacy and I want um, anonymity, which is the new celebrity nowadays. Um, but you know, there's a part of me that's like, I got no fucks to give. Right, because I'm I'm really I'm exercising my um, abilities within the bounds of the of the matrix, and where I am a rebel and a system buster is beyond the matrix, is yeah. metaphysical, 
And it's where, um, is where I'm busting systems with each person that I come in contact with, um, you know, and each person that comes in contact with me, that's an opportunity to change the whole game beyond the matrix, right? Yeah. Beyond the invisible person. So, um, you know, I'm like, yeah, you know, you tell the measure of a person by their checkbook, their checkbook log, or, you know, you could see like where they spend their money, how much money they spend and where they spend their time. Yeah. It's very de- like where you spend your money is a definitive fucking, you know, uh, indication into your psychology and your, and your kind of like how you live your life. But, uh, you know, I mean, I'm, I mean, I don't know. I'm just not, I'm just I mean, I'm not saying, I'm, about it. you know, I used to, I used to be like, I remember I'm obviously a lot younger and a lot less conscious, but I was like, I mean, like if you're not doing anything fucking wrong, who ca- I mean, who cares? I'm like, what, you know, but then you start to learn about why they're, you know, why they want to track and why they want to keep tabs on everything that you're doing. And you're like, okay, so that's not cool. So like, there's two sides to it, you know, like, and I'm, I'm, you know, this is, we're supposed to be in the age of transparency. And I, you know, I think that we got, you know, a few toes in, but we got the rest of our foot and a whole nother foot to go because it has just begun. We are coming to a point where I think, you know, as above, so below consciousness is going to continue to evolve. Human beings have this innate ability to be telepathic and to tune into everything, you know, to intuit, you know, um, and attune to everything that, you know, we get these awesome downloads. And I just think that as more of the shit, that's more of these systems that are in place that are completely fucked and flawed, you know, fall away, you're going to have a greater transparency, you know, like, not just like uh, with consciousness, but with, you know, with, with, with all the information, you know, I mean, like, can you imagine I mean, the Pentagon hasn't handed in a single budget in I don't know, 30 years. They're the, they're the only branch. They only, the only place that has not handed in a single budget they're, every year. They're just like, Oh no, we can't do it. Now. Sorry. It's classified. Yeah. <laughs> Be like, but wait a minute. There's, eight trillion dollars missing and now that's kind of like mine <laughs> just all my gear that's all you can look at there it is yeah <laughs> i mean but there's a you see the problem though i mean like the problem is you can't you can't operate like that you can't have a system that is not accountable to anyone but itself you know no matter what it is whether you're talking about you know the the the, the big chemical companies companies like dupont that you know the story of dupont and teflon great so the, dupont was one of the founding members of the epa there's a conflict of interest there of course you couldn't find fucking teflon for 75 years dupont said it didn't exist they were the ones helping the epa figure yeah. out what existed so you have a conflict of interest and we you can take that analogy and fucking splatter it on, on basically every organization that we have set up that is supposed to be looking out for us that and that's a a big problem that I have and that a big part that people need to wake up to. And I'm probably too outspoken about it because I keep getting kicked off Facebook, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, like I mean, we're I think- on, it's like we're at the base of, you know, like Mordor or, or like a fiery volcano selling shaved ice trying, you know, like it's <laughs> like the, or the band playing on the Titanic. It's like, it doesn't for me, whatever all the stuff that's going on in the system and the uncontrollable stuff is, is it's got its own evolution, you know, like I do, I do what I can to try to change my frequency and rise through and go beyond the things that tie me down. And, and I feel like through doing that, that you, that's the way you start the energetic change. And so I've found like I've become a real media dropout as opposed to like, checking out nft and paying attention to robin hood and things like that lately and i have had such a different reality and and like my it's i'm experiencing me through the storm and through the war and but that not being the uh, the driving force you know like because i can't you know like i can't i can't get mad enough and, I'll, and I may never stop getting mad. And so I've been consciously trying to, like, I'll sing the song and I'm mad, right? But if, but I'll try to sing it until all of a sudden I'm not mad anymore. And then I change the direction of the song. And then that's the one that I put out. 
but because like I work through it, but they're like, I don't need to whine to everybody else. This was for me. Now let me sing the changed, you know, like mm. what I've learned. Yeah, it's a cathartic this. journey for you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And that's a that's a phenomenal metaphor, man. And I'm gonna take it right to heart, actually, because it's some serious wisdom, Justin. That you know, like, because I I do get very passionate and excited about these things because I want people to be aware. I don't like to see people taken advantage of. I don't like to see people suffer needlessly. And there's a lot of that that goes on. Right. And I, yeah. and I get worked up about it, but it's like you said, I could get worked up all fucking day and I could stay worked up and it's not how I want to live my life. So it's like, uh, it's a great reminder what you just said to let it, you know, have your feelings and let them, express them, find a way to let them move through you and, and then come back to yourself before you decide to put out, because when you put out that energy, you're going to, you know, the people who are going to be attracted to it are the ones that agree with you anyway. And it's just more of that energy. So it's, you know, there's a lot of wisdom in what you just said. Thank you for saying it. Like I can't completely control, like I've really tried to over the past year. Like I've really controlled what goes into this head now. Yeah. And into these Nothing wrong with that. Know? And, uh, but it's so funny how sensitive I am now. And like when my neighbor will try to feed me something from the day's news and I'm like, it's like, like somebody <laughs> getting ready to show you of like a horrible murder. You're like, no, no, or something. I'm like, no, God. You know? Like, no, no, don't show me that, man. I can't unsee it. Now it's gonna, I'm just going to go. Yeah, now it. I'm going to be thinking about it. <laughs> but but so I still, I you know, I still try to do it a little bit. But So, uh, Foss, in the time we have left, I want to shift gears a little bit. Yeah, dude, we have what, to. You know what? what? I'm reading What is mind. going on with the UF? What is dude, going on with the Dude, I was just about UFO to tell you, man. I, you know, I can't even... You know, I had a friend, uh, a, a buddy of mine, send me a link the other day, and he's like, did you see the 60 minutes about the UFOs? I'm like... <laughs> I'm not going to watch 60 minutes. Everything that the Dude. the Pentagon is putting out, everything it's that the, for years, you know, it's first of all, if the Pentagon is putting it out, it's not good. Okay, nothing good has ever really come out of the Pentagon, and the it, the Pentagon is creating the news to confirm the news. This is what they do. This is a classic false flag operation, and we've known it's been coming for years, but they've they're ramping it up. And every, every time I see a fucking headline, I, I got to like, I got to pause. I got to breathe. I know. Like I, I just saw one the other day, three days ago said nine UFOs swarm naval vessel. <laughs> the they swarmed it. Oh, did they like, first of all, those vessels were sent there to be photographed by the Pentagon. Okay. We have a whole fleet of them, you know, just Justin, you know what I'm, uh, you guys know what I'm talking about. We have these vehicles. So they're being sent. They're, they're propagandizing the next false flag. They're their next power grab, which is going to be a, you know, the specter of an alien threat. If you yeah. listen to it, every fucking report that they come out with on the news, whether it's Tucker, you've got, you know, I used to like um, Jeremy, Corbin, whatever his name is, um, you know, the, the whole weaponize your curiosity guy. Mm. And I, and I, I don't, I don't know him to not like him. All I know is he's, he's become the, the mouthpiece of, you know, he's on every fucking interview, you know, saying, we don't know, you know, his eyes are real big. I'm like, dude, what did they do to you? Like, you know, I, you, you didn't used to eat acid this often. Like now you're just like, He's like, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know if, if they're, they, we, we know that they like to hang around our, our nuclear power sites and they, they could be a threat and it's all bullshit. We know what they are. We, we specifically know the ones that he's talking about and he's bet he's being tooled by the Pentagon. I'm, I'm just, it just blows my mind that he's sold out because he used to be really like a brother in arms when it came to getting disclosure the disclosure we know is sitting there and has been for the last, you know, 80 fucking years. They got 80 years of documents, 80 years of technology and yeah, they're literally lean, shitting on it. You know? Yeah. I tend to lean in towards people that are like the retirees that are coming out for disclosure and, and that are, oh, yeah. um, you know, sharing their personal experiences, you know um, I'm finding it, uh, you know, telling that uh, the government is releasing more and more of these, uh, you know, these foot, this footage from, you know, our, our military planes and such. And I think it's interesting. Um, 
you know, the, again, like anything else, you have to eat the meat, spit out the bones as best you can. And, um, you know, the realization, because there's so many games going on at once, there's so many, so many games agendas within I games know. within games, within games that, you know, the reality is that, yes, we have, uh, the likelihood is that we do have, um, you know, parts of the government that are fortifying their position for another power grab, but yeah. there, there are actual other star, you know, star family brothers and sisters, who are here to help the transition of the earth beyond the, the little game that's going on, the big metaphysical, big, yeah. you know, um, you know, game in the stars is that, you know, the earth is going to do is going to transition into a higher vibratory state. Yeah. And that's because of the, the nature of where we are, um, you know, just like uh, the old faithful that bursts every two minutes and 23 seconds, because of the geological formation, as we go through the house of Aquarius, um, uh, and, and we pass through these parts of the parts of the, you know, our, our, our galactic orbit around the center of, uh, you know, our galaxy, then these things are, are, are part of the natural, you know, uh, you know, yeah. evolution of those things. So, you know, there's games within games within games. And, and yes, while some people are playing this game, if you, if you buy into all, I just it, hope no one buys it. I hope, I hope everyone's like, everyone just calls bullshit, man. Cause it's, it's complete bullshit. You know, like there's, it, it I, it's i'm i'm gonna be are you saying that the are you saying the images are not real or are you saying that those are images are are our ships there are ships. saying they're Uf, ufos i'm saying there are ships and they're they're very very well made and they're being put in a place being sent to a place to be photographed by a very compartmentalized you know group of people who you know may or may not be literally sitting in the fucking Pentagon, but they're, but they're the military industrial complex people, the, you know, the ones who built these ships and have had them for 40 years, you know, but I want to read something to you guys. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Dr. Stephen Greer. I don't care what. I was just going to say something. You know, fucking Crestone. You know, I I, I know a lot of people have a lot of shit about him, but I, but I respect him uh, immensely. He's not afraid to go into the lines then. He's not afraid to try and, you know, negotiate with fucking dragons, you know, and I and I I have to respect that. People think that that's some kind of uh, weakness of his, but you know, he's willing to talk to anyone and try to I get like them to see, you know, see the light and do the right thing. But he put out a statement the other day it said and it's perfectly well said. The latest Pentagon report continues a 75-year-long disinformation campaign by the Pentagon. First it asserts that the US does not have advanced aircraft that behave as shown in recent U.S. military videos. This is patently false. In every case, those videos show classified anti-gravity electromagnetic field propulsion craft made by Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman, et cetera, et cetera. Secondly, it denies that we have evidence of extraterrestrial beings visiting Earth. This is also false. As, abundantly, as abundant evidence proves this fact, as found in the book and in the documentary unacknowledged and by direct firsthand testimony of over 900 disclosure project whistleblowers. It is possible that those who authored this latest report have been denied access to the unacknowledged special access projects, USAPs, that managed UFO and extraterrestrial related operations. That's likely what's going on. This is plausible since, you know, he talks about how he briefed the director of the CIA and has been briefed briefing every fucking president, you know, but when he, he was, he said the other day, which I thought was fascinating when he finally got a chance to talk to Pence and Trump, when he sat down with them, and this was very late in the fourth year that, you know, usually he gets in earlier, but he knew someone who was families with Trump, I'm sorry, families with Pence. And so they had dinner together. He said he was floored by how taken they were with the alien threat propaganda. He said they were literally completely convinced that there was an alien threat. So that's the president and the vice president who have been propagandized for, for three and a half years to believe that there is some kind of alien threat, you know, happening right now as we speak. That's fucking, that's disturbing to me. And he was just starting to make progress with, uh, with him and Pence and show them the actual evidence and explain to them what's happening with the, all these, you know, unacknowledged special access, access programs. And of course, then the election happened and he's no longer president. So 
Well, yeah. You know, no, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I think it actually kind of boils down to, or boils back to, um, you know, uh, Dr. Greer creating, have you seen the app, uh, CE five? Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Close encounters mm-hmm. five, um, contact. So who gives a shit about all the rest of it? If he's given you, given us a, a recipe for co- connecting and contacting these, uh, these, you know, star brothers and sisters, I don't call them aliens. Cause they're, not yeah, I don't, aliens. I don't like that. They're, they're us. Yeah. Me neither. So if, if you're really into it and you really want to see it and you really want to experience it firsthand, then get into a meditative state, drop mm-hmm. in, connect, be humble and, and follow the process and give guidance so that they can find you and have an experience, man. Like, yeah. And like all this other shit is, is subjective and it's the movie, man. If you want to buy into the movie, buy into the movie yeah. and be that person. Like, and you know, yeah. you can only take so much information in from the fucking little square box, which by the way, revelation and the Bible speaks to, have you seen what, you know, the image of the, of the, of the beast has said today. And it's, it's all false. It's all misleading. It's all designed to create hysteria and put us in a more yeah. malleable state when we're, when we're completely stirred up. And you don't know which what which way to believe. You don't know what to believe, and that's that's actually a sign of the of the times for me because it's like, you know, at a moment of absolute distrust, the only thing you can trust is yourself. Yeah. And if if they deteriorate that, then they've really won, right? And I'm okay. I'm 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 all about personal experience and creating my own bubble, being connected and understanding what's happening in the world, but not subscribing to it so much that that uh it throws my own game off completely you know and you mean like um, how it just threw my game off and i was just ranting about uh yeah i mean if that, <laughs> you feel like your game is thrown off brother i mean but look, no but i mean reality. i i do i get I, I get i get worked up i do yeah yeah, yeah. hunter's and always that's... trying to get me back to uh you know the center and i do always go back to it but i but i do get a. Uh, I just, I mean, it just boggles my mind that, that they get away with this shit. So I guess it makes sense though, considering people didn't even really acknowledge that we had, well, I guess it was, it was a conspiracy that we had UFOs and there were UFOs up until like two years ago. So I guess it makes sense that they can get away with what they get away with, but you're right though. You know, contact is there to be made, man. It's, it's really, it's there. People, maybe they don't want to believe it, but some of us know it to be true. Yeah. Well, it's look, everything is, it's all about which dog you're feeding. If you feed the dog of, of negativity and you continually look at things that create food for that dog, you're going to live in a bubble that exists like that. Yeah. And it's not that the people that are, you know, in the other bubble, let's say are living this like disconnected woo, like, you know, hippie, you know, I'm okay. And everything's beautiful and nothing's wrong with the world. Right. That's, that's a far left bubble. But the reality is that there's a bubble in the center that's designed for you. And you can make your movie any way you want, you know, yeah. and, and there's some people, you know, obviously there are people that have less uh, opportunities to do different things, but even those people have a choice to subscribe. You, we all subscribe. We all hit that, that invisible right. subscribe button to everything we take in and everything we internalize. Very true. And I'm just, I'm just simply saying, you know, um, I, there's just so much out there that, that, I'm pulling back into what I know and what I have influence over and I can test and see and, you know, and so everything else just becomes, uh, becomes the movie and becomes no, it's a great, just a, you know, it's simplicity. Important. And I love the, uh, I love the subscribe speaking of subscribe and no, I'm just kidding. Of subscribe. <laughs> yeah. subscribe. It's subscribe, subscribe, man. Red pill unplugged. Follow that little UFO you saw in the beginning and, and make your gray hat out. Look. But, but it's a, <laughs> There you go. So you don't need it's, tinfoil hats. We need gray hats. But here, there you go. Look, this was this just happened today. Shit. Sorry to interrupt. But I literally put this on Darth Vader right before our uh, <laughs> thing. And I didn't know that you were going to have a gray hat on. <laughs> That's awesome, but, dude. But it's your fucking hat. And I mean, this is a vintage seven, you know, 77 Darth Vader, too. So it's like. That's Today awesome. I just put the gray hat on him, and then I'm st- when you popped on, and I saw that this whole time, I'm just like, <laughs> "That's funny." I look up, and my only hat I had this hat on before I got on, and I'm just like, "That's funny." That we is are, so funny. We are on the same channel, definitely. Synchronistic, exactly. exactly. No, Lynn, it's it's. Thank you for the reminder. It's a what you subscribe to, you know, is what, what you're going to, what's going to show up for you. And it's, it's, a, I need to hear that reminder. So that's, it's, it's also what you're going to attract brother. Like yeah. honestly, yeah. like yeah. 
if you're in this moment and you've got your story and your blueprint is built in such a way, then the laws of attraction will take over. Oh, we yeah. are magnetic. We are magnetic uh, in, in beings. And that magnetism is, that's what, how they get you is like, well, they want to feed you all this little bullshit and destabilize you and take you off your game. And okay, that's cool. But you play that movie over there. I can see it from across the street. I got my yeah. own shit going on. And yeah. you know, like that's where, that's where the real, real is, you know, and that's where <laughs> we all got to stay. Yeah. Be informed. Don't, don't throw your head underneath the sand, but at the same time, have compassion for people that have stranger, weirder, you know, ideas. And absolutely. It's all the movie, man. It's all it the is. movie. It you is. Know? What we'll is, what is, out. what did, what did the uh, hunter's guru say to him? It's uh, when Hunter <laughs> Hunter was uh, upset about something. He said, you're, you're throwing things at the movie screen. You're the, you're, you're yelling at a movie screen, you know, to just, oh, stop, yeah. to just yeah, stop yeah. it. Yeah. And it's that. your movie screen. Yeah, and it's, it's to top it all up, it's yours anyway. You got, you got the damn control to stop it. Anyway. Yeah, so well yeah, said, totally. man. But totally. um, so I want to hear from Justin because I have a feeling that Justin has had. I, I mean, maybe I'm way close off, encounter. I want to hear this too. I, I, I want to hear yeah, yeah. <laughs> He goes, "Oh shit." So, so can you just to give us, I, I, I don't know. So something tells me the nature of what you do and how you do it, that you've had some experiences, you know, whether they be Wait, interior, uh, you know, I would, or, yes, I would say yes. Um, more so that like, I went to three burns, right? I went to three complete burns and then I was done. Um, I've definitely had quite a few more, um, experiences before i moved to colorado i had them so i used to have a reoccurring dream as a kid that's that was the only time i've ever had a reoccurring dream and it was um remember the remember battlestar galactica the original version oh yeah 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 with oh, the yeah. silver cylon raiders and then the, the, the roundest ships like they landed in my backyard and then I spent the dream running through all the backyards to get to my aunt and uncles down the street where I would run in and turn off the TV and then they would disappear. And I had, I would have that dream many times. Right. And, uh, and then when I moved to, before I moved to Crestone, so I went to the burn first in 2008 and then moved to Kauai. And I was like living on that land there where they go and call them. You know? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, and just having my own my own experience, and then I lived. Then I moved to Crestone, and Crestone's got the UFO highway, the extraterrestrial highway. It's the most the most sightings in the in the country for <laughs> you know forever. And there's like that's where the cattle mutilations were, and and all this stuff. And it's it's a sacred mountain range where all like a bunch of different tribes would only go to do ceremony. Wow. You know, like this is a high energy land. There's vortexes there. There's there's cardinal points of the vortexes and the ley lines that run through. It's kind of like an opposite Tibet. They're like the sister oh, cool. energies. And man, that that place, like you would see stuff that was clearly for you floating out there, you know, just like like a carousel. Yeah, and you'd just like go stand out there, and I'd be, I'd be going, just well, come on, man, stop, f stop messing with me. I can't tell if I'm seeing something or it's really like get closer, so, you know, like that kind of stuff. But yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, and and uh, and then you know a lot of stuff like that, and then then I met this medicine, this this Ute medicine man named Joseph, and uh, when down in the sand dunes, my dad was there filming something, and he was telling me. He's like, you know, you see things up there, don't you? You know, and I'm like, You're yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, I go, and I also, he goes, you see that, you see that mountain spirit that guards the mountain, right? And I'm like, well, I see, yeah, I see him, but I go, I've never seen him, but I see him, you yeah. know. And then he, and then he kind of like clued in that I was, that I was tuned in, and and he's like, you know, those ships you see, those are us, but they're us. Yeah, from the future from a long from from future and beyond and yeah. it's like they, they go in and out of those um the lakes up in the mountains and uh and this is where they this is one of the places where the youth say the ant people came up and brought them down into the earth 
for the to keep them until they could come back up, right? Uh. And so the sand dunes are this giant out of place, ten thousand foot high sand dunes in the middle of a, you know, a mountain range in in the high desert, and it just looks like excavation had been, you know, like they no, they all say that the sand is blowing in from the Rio Grande, you know. Yeah. And it's like no man, that's just like where they. They were just grinding up the mountain and spitting it out and turning it yeah. in the sand. And uh, but then I had a thing, a moment in Crestone where I had a dream. But now I'm starting to realize that a lot of these things, when they were dreams, were not. You know. But it's like I had a dream where I'm like, uh, uh. You know, I just said, I'm like, no, I don't. It was kind of like a dream where they are offering you a sh- like to come off of the planet before it got. Yeah. Poor shit got bad. And I made the conscious choice where I'm like, if this is a dream, well, so what? I'm staying with my friends and my family. Yeah. I got to help them. I'm not going to escape. Like, and I, and then this, and then the stops, the stuff stopped for a long, wow. long time. But, but one of the weirdest and Hunter, Hunter's probably going to kill me for saying this, but okay, that's okay. But I, I had it when I knew Hunter, I'd gone and done this Reiki session, right? And, and had this like, experience where i was basically almost lifted off the table wow and and then and then at the end of it my the 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 worker the reiki master goes she she was white right like her eyes were like she's like what did you see i'm like (laughs) i'm I'm, i go i'm not telling you you have to tell me or i'll never believe it yeah you know and she's described exactly like i was like i looked up and there different size kind of beans. Wow. Right. right? Did like three different sizes and they, and they were like stuff going down here. And I looked and, and I immediately went, no, I'm not going to look down. <laughs> I'm not, because I felt like there wasn't anything bad going on. Right. But right, I can't right. deal with grossness. I'm horrible. I'm a wimp when it comes to that. And I go, I'm not going to look down. Well, she's experienced the same thing standing around it and then i told hunter about it and then hunter and tom this guy that one of our friends they basically kind of meditated and then called it in mm-hmm. and then hunter calls me and he's like dude you, you got to come over and hang with us dude i'm freaking out I go, did you look down he goes i look down <laughs> <laughs> i'm like you idiot dude i told I'm you not to out. look down man <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that's awesome. That's dude. You know, I hear a lot of, I, a lot of experiences. Like I, like I, I go to a Dr. Joe Dispenza meditation retreat and, and, you know, he doesn't bring a lot of attention to these accounts because that's not what the retreats are about. You know, we go, it's a, it's a meditation retreat. There's a lot of healing that goes on, but sometimes during the, we do these, we do these coherence healings where, you know, we used to do them eight around one person and you know as an energy healing it's it's all hands off but during these healings people have reported like you know these incredible um you know like 10 like you know one woman she she was she was english she was like i remember i looked up and there was this 10 foot tall person there and he was talking to another person who was maybe 12 foot tall and they were talking about me she's like and one of them like had my leg and i was like huh ah? you know, like, and, you know, she's vividly describing this from memory. And, you know, I guess she had all these hip problems and like, you know, she, there was all this energy in the room and she is, she, she said she watched these two beings like work, like do work on her. Um, It was the most fascinating testimony that you'll ever hear. Cause you know, you can see outright, you know, she's definitely not making it up. Um, And there were other people in the room and who were around her. Of course, she's the only one who saw them, but you know, it makes you think like, you know, how much do we not see about what's happening every day all around us? How many, so of these, you know, it's, about like, it's incredible. Yeah. I mean, the and Adam, but when you start, be careful for what you wish for. When the filter starts getting removed, it starts getting a little crazy. Yeah. You know, and, now, and, that, and it's like, it, cause now I got, now I got to train my mind. Now that I've opened up again, back into that world, there's, you know, it's like, you realize, yeah, man, I know I wasn't alone, but now I'm really not alone. Like, there's dimensional <laughs> beings here. There's all sorts of things going on around. Yeah, that's, that's right. So I, like I take a everyone, big ass rip. The blinders TNT. don't come off like this. They come off like this. So you see everything. It's not just the 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 rainbows and unicorns. You know, it's 
it's the other side too. People don't people don't think of that. They 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 just want the expanded perspective, but they don't realize what comes with it, you know. And it's that's a lot of times you think, oh, my friend went hey, crazy. Oh, no, he didn't go crazy. <laughs> yeah, awareness is uh, consciousness is awareness, and awareness is being aware, and being aware is being privy to something and having right. it become manifest into your reality. And, um, you know, um, you know, I've, I've spent a ton of time with, uh, you know, DMT as a, as a medicine and, um, I've had many journeys, um, where I'm, you know, guiding people, uh, where they have, um, literally called in, um, you know, very, very specific healing and Mm. where, where there's beings and I'm, I'm, I'm talking not like angelic beings. I'm talking like dimensionally shifted higher frequency beings like who are the there to help. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whatever. I mean, there's, yeah. but there, you know, there's all different types. I mean, in, in a lot of my journeys um, where I'm full spectrum, super high death beyond, like right. I can see 180 degrees, yeah, yeah, 180 yeah. degrees in my periphery. Right. Because it's no longer these yeah. eyes that are working. It's my pineal gland and these eyes. Mm-hmm. And in doing so uh, there's always um, friendly beings like, walking around, looking at me, experiencing me yeah. as I'm experiencing yeah. them. And, an and it's like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and that's the thing is like, I, I, a long time ago, I, I resided myself to realizing that I am never, ever alone. No. Even if I want to be alone, I'm never alone. Yeah. And that, and it almost gave me kind of like a moral compass to a degree. I'm like, I, yeah, I don't know. I'm not trying yeah. to be good. I like trying to be like the, the, I'm just trying to be a better version of me. Right. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the point is, it's like, if I'm in this room and I'm masturbating, uh, I'm not doing it by myself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if I'm in this yeah. room doing something that I shouldn't be doing, not, you know, it's true. It's just, it's just this, this, this beautiful feeling that, you know, when you connect with that awareness and that consciousness, that there's so many layers to uh, the, intelligence that surrounds yeah. us and and i've i've literally gone into my own uh dmt um you know journeys where, where i can feel definitive hot heat and light moving across my body in certain areas and stopping oh my and god yeah like wow. really really beautiful stuff where i'm, I'm like yes please come f- fix me help me transition yeah. help me you know everything I'm, I'm open i'm willing you know i don't fear any of those things because i i always you know, I have my, my, yeah. my golden pyramid of, of protection and it's, uh, it's charged Man. with all the, all the love energy in the world. And, and, you know, benevolence is what I seek. Yeah. I, uh, oh. I had a remarkable, uh-ho. 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 If, I, if you guys get a chance, go to about six minutes into the video. That's uh it's a point. It's a half podcast. It's uh it's, it's called uh the diary of a life-changing psychedelic experience. We were going to say ayahuasca experience, but we didn't want to flag the, yeah. the sensors. Um, but, but it's, it's like a 15 minute share that I, I had this remarkable experience. Um, and, and, and I, and I, it was crazy because I, I, at, at the end of it, I mean, it was like, I don't I can't even get into it. It's, it was so profound. It was life-changing. It was phenomenal. It was so amazing, you know, but it was, at the end of it, I couldn't, I had some trouble getting acclimated back into my body. And, um, no, it was, it, and I, and I kind of really started to make myself panic, I think, um, cause I couldn't orient in my senses. And, and then I was confused. Uh, and then I realized I was like missing my, it was, you know, it was an ayahuasca ceremony, but I was missing my shirt. And then when I found it, tried to put it back on, I got tangled up in it and I was like, <laughs> I've straight jacketed myself now and I'm covered in fucking sweat. Like, like literally the next morning, my friend walked up to my pants and he was like, what the fuck? I'm like, I was, I was just still wet. Don't touch us. He goes, what did you do? I was like, I was sweating. He's like, Jesus Christ. I got a you, little kiss. you need a little cambo before you did the Aya. Fucking Hey dude, I needed something, but I mean, it was, it was, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do anything different, but um, man, it was, it was, it was remarkable. But I, but I was surprised at the end. I was like, you know, physically being um, kind of like bugging out, like like even though I was pretending I was fine. <laughs> was just fix- Wasn't that I, always the okay? case? <laughs> you know, I, they, I was just imagining them. They're like looking at me, like I was like fucking covered in sweat, and, and they're like, "Get him a bucket." I'm like, "No, I'm, I'm not nauseous." Meanwhile, like I look like I've been sprayed by a, a, a high pressure uh, fire hose. Fire hose. <laughs> yeah, I'm like I can just imagine them like get him a bucket anyway. <laughs> 
Yeah. But, oh, the bucket. Yeah, the bucket. But, well, you know, we're we're always we're we're yes, you know, sharing this with somebody this this past weekend, and we are, in my estimation, you know, in a a thin vibratory uh, frequency range that uh, requires collective conscious creation. Like we have, you've created something, a piece of music, and I hear it. It becomes the reality of our collective conscious, and um, you know, and at a certain point. You know, I, I, I believe firmly that, um, you know, I believe firmly in our shared divinity and that we're all a fractal representation of source and that fractal representation of source is allowed to have its own individual unique experience. And that individual unique experience comes into this world as a blank slate. And, um, and the whole purpose, in my opinion, is, is that in order for the infinite, you know, our divinity to appreciate what it means to be div- to, to be divine and infinite, we have to first understand what it means to be finite. Yeah. And, and so the, the nature of our finite being is that we, we, we are born, we live and we die like a flower. And the flower yeah. is beautiful because we see it in its full bloom and cycle from, from its bloom to its you know, complete you know, maj- majesty. And then all of a sudden it wilts and dies. And, and so you know, the crazy thing is that, you know, 80 years to a divine infinite being is, you know, a spit in a bucket. Yeah. And, and it's like, we chose to come here because this is a place of, of great learning and, and other things. But, but, but the reality is, is every time we jump out and we, we pass on to the next, you know, the next gateway, yeah. we're always like, well, that only took like a half a heartbeat. Well, yeah. Let's go do it again, because I still want to do this. I still need to learn that. Right. I didn't connect with this person. And and then we, we, you know, we come back and, you know, it's not so much the karmatic wheel, although I feel it has some play into it, yeah. but, but our desire to come back and experience the nature of being finite gives us this definitive, uh, indelible impression uh, and the lesson of wielding our, our divine power Yeah, because we cannot wield divine power with, without consciousness um, and understanding what it means in the finite nature of things and how beautiful it really is and how magical and majestic we really are. Um, we have to have those moments of, yeah. of contrast, right? We, this whole place is light is contrast from light to dark creates contrast. So, and we know, are having, light beings. We yeah, are having this thin corridor of existence. You know, Yoda said that actually. To, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. That's right. He did. Yeah. He did that. Something like that. Right on. Yo, you guys, you guys rock, man. We, we could do this for hours, honestly. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> We've done it for just about hours. I know. Yeah, we, we have done it. We literally hours. have, but we could do it for hours more. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I want to give you guys a chance to, uh, well, Lynn, you've, you've, I love what you've said in, in closing. And so, Justin, I want to give you a chance to, um, to, to close too. I, I, I'd love to ask my guests, you know, um, kind of, uh, an opportunity to, to share with people the secret that they've learned, you know, about this life. And, and if they could impart something on, on, you know, others, you know, like I would, I would probably tell people um, as much as they can to see themselves in, in others, because it's the, you know, it's the, it's the biggest gateway to compassion to see, you know, if, if, if it's the president you hate, then see your, you know, see yourself in a president. If it's this person who you think you can't stand then look in them, look them in the eyes and realize that's your mother, that's your sister, that's your son. That's, you, you know, that's probably what I would say. Like, what well, what would you, what would you give to people? No, that comes up while you're saying that right then is that like, that, I don't remember where the quote came from, but it was like a student asked a guru, how do we, how shall I treat others? And, and the guru said, there are no others. <laughs> right. You know? That's a better and, way to say everything I just said. <laughs> and, and, and it's, it's That's a why he's a guru. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. But it's, it's, great. it's late. I mean, what's work for what's working for me is, is trying. The, the hardest thing is to let, allow other people to be in their pain and their shit and to, be okay with that and to not and to not have to have any investment in other people's thoughts or or other people's beliefs you know it's like let them let everybody be who they are man let everybody's learning everybody's discovering 
who they are. I know I am on a daily basis and whoever I thought I was yesterday doesn't work today. And I got to make a new version today because whatever I did good for myself yesterday doesn't last today. I got to keep doing it. And it's my biggest thing right now is trying to learn how to love when there's so many reasons to hate. You yeah. Know? Like so many, so many reasons to be mad and so many, it's like, I've, I've got one of my oldest songs that I've never finished because it's felt special, you know, and I think I'm putting it out on my new record as it was recorded on the jam nice. box and the, and the hook is just going to find a way to love you, you know, going nice, to find man. a way. And it's like, that's what I'm trying to, you know, every day. It's like the, the polarity of the world and in America and just seeing it in my own family and things yeah. like that and how that how that kind of stuff affects it doesn't affect me but it's affecting other people in a, in a real in a yeah. real way you know yeah. and so i've just been trying to tell my you know the people around me just let everybody be yeah you I two like, guys are gold yeah. um uh, let the man it. vibrate let the man vibrate yeah that's, that's right that's how i like to say it man let's let Love somebody it. just be them let them vibrate the way they're going to vibrate it's like it's like being mad at somebody for going to watch a movie at a different movie theater that you've been watching it's like yo man i'm just going to a different movie theater yeah. i'm watching a different movie and it's okay yeah. cool. it's okay <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> you know so it's true anyway uh, i love you guys awesome yeah, man. you guys are awesome justin lynn thank you guys so much for coming on justin that was awesome man you know i appreciate the 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 closing words were were gold and lynn always uh you're you're so much wisdom bro thank you so much for sharing and 